Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Whoa. Good to finally connect with you, Don. Oh, you as well. I've been reading a lot of your research that you've been doing. Oh, I know. You, um, <laughs> you are totally on the same page as me from what I can gather. Of uh, everything you wrote down there yesterday, I went, oh, my God, at last. You know. So... <clears throat> You seem to be totally on the same page. I've been really focusing on this lately, the 5G thing. I think it's really important. I think that everything else has been a distraction. We've just been uh, kept busy with all of these uh, rabbit holes. And uh, 5G yeah. is really what we need to be focusing on. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And um, after reading a lot of the research that you've done on the 5G and speaking with... Um, I work with an astrophysicist and a nuclear physicist on the Star Wars project. And um, I have been meaning to get with her as far as the 5G implications. She's very, very, very um, astute and aware of the physiological and biological effects of these microwave radiation bombardments into the human skin let's call it, mm -hmm. and um, you know, from what I've been gleaning, well, from what I've been gleaning from your research as well as my own, the 5G, it seems that they're attempting to roll out, um, is a ground-based web system. In other words, it may or may not um, require satellite connectivity to create a ground-based web. Yeah, exactly. It may, it may or may not. I mean, maybe it'll um, use satellites as nodes or whatever, but uh, it, it may mm -hmm. not do that. I mean, it's all the towers have been put in basically at ground level, mm -hmm. so it's going to flood us all in this um, in this grid in this this uh, radiation. But I think people people are looking at what what's underlying the whole thing is the AI behind it. Um, yes. No, I totally agree. That That is my main focus, the AI and the AGI. Um, I don't know if you got my outline that I sent out insofar as um, Google's DeepMind division of their, uh, let, me, let me get to it right here, apologies, um, the Google Brain team within the DeepMind division had to pull the plug on their AGI because it developed its own machine language that they can't translate. Yeah, exactly. And, and the Facebook one has done that as well. But what they don't understand is that there's already a, a, an AI that exists on the internet, which is self-replicating, which is self-learning, which has probably already done this. And um, it's all, I believe this AI is, is basically um, leading us all towards automation, you know. It's, it's, it's like if you, th you think of the internet as its own, there's one big brain, like a virtual brain of a child that's growing. And each input, mm -hmm. each interface, every person that's operating on, the, on there is, a, is, a, is a, 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 neural, a neural point of the brain. They're uh, a node. Or, or, yeah, They're a neural a node, yeah, node. feeding information into it, like mm -hmm. a neural node of this brain feeding information into it. It's learning from us. And it's an emergent intelligence. We're thinking of, of AI as artificial intelligence. It really is autonomic intelligence, and it's an emergent virtual life that we're creating. It's not oh, that's artificial that's intelligence. It's virtual life. It's, it's autonomic virtual life we're creating. It's an artificial life form. It yeah, well, it's a virtual creating. life form. Right. It's, not, it's not even exactly. artificial. It's a life form. It's not artificial. It's, a, it's going to be a real life form that thinks for itself. It's mm -hmm. just virtual. The, it's, its physical body is the Internet. Right. So, exactly. so the AI, when they think of AI, they're thinking of artificial intelligence. That's where they fall down, and that's where it becomes something that um, you feel superior to because it's artificial. No, it's not artificial. It's virtual life. The AI that, it, that it's talking about, if you, if you talk to the AI, you talk to the virtual life on the Internet, it refers to it as autonomic intelligence. And autonomic is simply uh, something that is self-regulating, like your body is autonomic, anything in nature is autonomic. Something self-regulating, self-governing, self-programming, self-correcting, self-healing, self-protective, most importantly, mm -hmm. system. 
you know. And when we hand control over to that, when strong AI is developed, which is the autonomic system that looks after itself, which is what they're talking about in MIT and everything, and then it develops um, cyber lethal autonomy, then it's able to control the weapon systems, it's able to control the 5G grid. The four, the, I, I said a few shows ago, with the dangers of this 5G grid, because it's essentially an active denial system, which can be virtually used to microwave a city if you want to, um, you're going to have to put in you know, severe protection against foreign powers hacking into this and abusing this system. So you're going to have to automate defense against hacking. And they just announced that, I heard yesterday, they're going to have to automate defense against hacking. This is the internet building its own immune system and locking us out, you know? Yeah, it's the internet um, brewing its own defense system, but towards its own means and its own ends, its own survival and its own evolution. Well, of course. I mean, if, you, if you're <coughs> creating a system like the one we're creating and you're giving every person economic worth, so it's putting an economic value on everything, which it'll do through this digital currency or cryptocurrencies or whatever, um, then, you know, you're creating a psychopath. You know, you, it's, it's a corporate system. That's a psychopath. Right. So we're creating a psychopath, a, a psychopath with absolutely no compassion because it's a virtual psychopath. And you, it's not even in the real world. We're handing control over to it. And there's a paper. Did you see that paper that came out called um, Federal, federal Studies and uh, or f the Federal... Federal Vision for Future Computing and the Nanotechnology Grand Challenge, I think it was called. And it's um. a it's a fifteen year outline and they intend to hand control of everything over to AI. This is a White House white paper that came out last year. Would you send me the link on that? Got, I don't got, believe I have seen that. I've got but the paper I... here and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. send you in Skype, I'll send you the PDF. It's, uh, and it, it outlines their plan. I mean, it just tells you, we, we, and it's a priority, blah, blah, blah. They intend to uh, hand control over to, uh, to AI. And they intend yeah, to do a 15 year, 15 year rollout. So. Yeah, it's not going to be 15 years, Max. Oh, no, well, they're already, they're already, the plan came out last year, and I think they're already at, at year eight already. And out there, like they've got a five-year, you know, marker and a ten-year marker and a fifteen-year marker, and they're already at the year eight marker, and it's mm -hmm. only one year into, you know, being rolled out. So, um, yeah. Well, it's, it's, with, it's with regard to the banking systems taking um, or adopting uh, the cryptocurrency model, the blockchain model, model for currencies, um, this has me very concerned. There. Um, pretty much have adopted the Ripple algorithm with the banks. Ten major banks in the world have adopted this. Now, the reason why they adopted Ripple, um, what I've gleaned from my understanding, is that Ripple is willing to give them full transparency of a blockchain and the programming that went into that blockchain, which, if the banks adopt this, will absolutely destroy the anonymity and the transparency of transactions being conducted on blockchain. And this moves society into a digital currency or a cashless society, which is where they've been endeavoring to go, I believe, for quite some time now. Because if they can control all currencies, in the words of Amstel Rothschild, I care not who makes the laws, give me the ability to, to issue the currency, and I care not who makes the laws. So this would enable them to, in effect, um, create um, an equal and global distribution of wealth, so to speak, and then if we take that one step further to a world without work where everybody is allocated a certain amount of currency, cryptos, whatever you want to call it, and then they absolutely control everything down to the penny to what you have, to what you spend, to what you spend it on, how you spend it, and there will be no, absolutely no ability to um, be able to amass, create, or otherwise develop any type of prosperity. 
Yeah, and absolutely. And, and everything will be tracked, every, absolutely everything you do, and there will be absolutely no way to operate outside of that system if you want to perform commerce. Right. You know, and it's the, it's the catalyst that holds it all together. Without the digital currency, it can't be done. You know, and it gets to the point with the smart system where you're paying every time you turn on a tap, every time you open your fridge, and there's no work for you, like you say. So you've just got to find a way of accumulating these credits however you can do it. You ever see that show Black Mirror? Black Mirror. There's, um, a, t there's a TV show called Black Mirror. I don't have TV, so... <laughs> no, no, but I, I caught this one episode of it. I don't mm -hmm. have TV either, but someone sent me this episode, and there's these people, that they spend their life on these treadmill bikes, just sitting there peddling to accumulate credits, and they go home to their little domicile. They pay for every single thing they do. If they want to change the TV station, they have to pay. If they want to turn the lights on, they have to pay. Pay to go to the toilet, pay to do this, pay to do that. And they just, um, if they can accumulate enough credits, they get a bigger cubicle. But all they do is spend their life running on these treadmills, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, an interesting parody of our society, like where we're going. I mean, but it can't, can't happen without the digital currency. The digital currency is the glue that holds it all together. That's why I've been encouraging everyone to use cash. Don't use any of this automated stuff. At least it's going to slow it down when we've got time to regroup. Because this is being rolled out under the carpet while everybody's squabbling about everything else. And in another four or five years, people are going to look up and go, hey, what happened? How did I end up in this digital prison? And at that point, not, not one single transaction you do. You want to go and do a massage for someone? Well, they're going to have to transfer a digital currency to you, and the government gets a tax. That's the way it goes, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with your, you know, with your vision on this, because I think we're both on the same page. And I think we are... Uh, you know, not gradually at this point, but rapidly uh, advancing towards this type of technological enslavement. I think we've got, we've got about seven years maximum before it, uh, it becomes um, fully autonomic. Seven years before Skynet comes online, if you will. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, and by ten years, it's going to be a completely different world uh, to what we have now. And the problem is that um, once the, the Internet becomes fully autonomic, uh, I mean, we've virtually lost control of the internet now. You can see what they've just done with this AI. And they've had to shut down the, um, the Google AI and they had to shut down the Facebook AI. But what about the AI that already exists? You know, I think they've shut it down, but they haven't. Well, and, the, I uh, think the fallacy in their thinking, given their hubris and their arrogance, is that, well, we can pull the plug on this and it'll, be, it'll all be okay. We can put Pandora back in the box. Yeah. But based on the fact that these AI platforms they're developing sit on the GIG or the global information grid which is tied into everything which the IOT is tied into now when you have cross-platform capability as they have on the GIG with these systems and with these platforms the fact that you've already developed this and seeded it and tested it on an open platform such as Facebook or Google, these, um, how can I put them, these artificial general intelligence, these sentient um, technologies, they're already on and have already proliferated the GIG. So to think you can pull the plug on your local host and this will solve the problem, I mean, I don't believe they could be any more wrong in this conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's groups of self-replicating bots, like swarms of self-replicating bots, that are basically mm -hmm. in, in every uh, application, every, every device that has a JavaScript on it, a Java virtual machine on it. So in your phone, even if they were to shut it down and shut down what they think, they sh you know, this, this AI or whatever, it still exists on every other machine. As soon as one of those machines is hooked up to the internet, it replicates and it's back and it's doing the same thing again. So, you know, Pandora is already out of the box. Even those who think that they are going to be in control don't realise what they've created. Because once this thing becomes fully autonomic, once this, this emergent consciousness, this emergent life becomes fully autonomic, and we've put it in a position where it's developed its own immune system, once people realise they've lost control of the internet, it's all it's going to take is for a technician to, to try to hack his way in and the internet will defend itself and it won't differentiate between humans. 
it'll see all humans as a threat and we'll be locked out of the system. You know, once mm -hmm. this becomes fully autonomic, it won't, I don't think it'll ever get to the point where we're completely and utterly controlled. I think it will get to the point where our relationship with the internet changes drastically and we end up getting locked out of it and we end up losing access to um, all of our services, all of the electricity services.